Hello, hello, beautiful people, beautiful souls, and welcome to this life. Um, I bet you are still feeling the energies of this weekend that uh, just ended. We passed through a very important uh, transition or portal or um, a very big energetic uh, weekend. We had the solar um, eclipse happening uh, from Saturday to, to Sunday night. Um, and it was at the difference of a couple of hours from the summer solstice. So, as I was explaining in the last video, as the sun was passing um, the transition into Cancer, marking the summer solstice, the moon also entered in Cancer um, and cr creating the, the, solar, the, lunar, the solar eclipse. My apologies. Uh, plus a lot of other astrological aspects that were exact in the same time. So this upcoming week, it's a good week to integrate everything that uh, has been going on this weekend uh, and see what are the, the seeds that start to grow from your intentions if you planted any in in this very powerful time. Right now, the moon is still in Cancer, so we are still in the same energy of the eclipse and the solstice. Um, if you have the possibility to be in nature these days, this is what I always uh, advise. It's a very good time to, to absorb the energies, to feel how how full of life the, the nature, the animals are being at this time and to, to absorb a little bit of this, um, of this force, of this great celebration that is happening all over the northern hemisphere of the summer solstice. The fires that um, were lit and the, the celebrations that uh, were happening, all the intentions that were launched. So besides the, the moon's journey for, for the, this week, what's interesting to mention is that we are already in full retrograde period. We have um, six planets in retrograde. And even if Venus is going to go direct this um, week on Friday, uh, Neptune, which is like um, a higher octave of, uh, of Venus, goes retrograde. So um, we might be happy that, okay, Venus has finished her journey and she is already emerging as a morning star. We can see Venus uh, right before the sunrise in the dawn. She's beautiful. I had uh, the chance to see her this weekend. Um, so even if she finished her, her journey and right now she is going to, to emerge back to light after her, um, descent in the underground after meeting with her shadows right now is the time to, to integrate these shadows and bring it to light. And Nep Neptune is going to go retrograde, um, Wednesday. So it's a couple of days difference that uh, we are still going to have six planets in in retrograde. Mercury it's in full retrograde. Um, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto they are also making their journey backwards. So my interpretation of this is that now we officially started the summer here in the northern hemisphere. Um, and uh, of course, summer, it's always uh, inviting us to be outside, to celebrate, to be outgoing, to meet people, to move forward. My, my intuition and my feeling and my sensation based on also what um, the, in, 
the invitations that we have from the planet is to hold our horses. Uh, of course, that doesn't mean to stop our lives like uh, the pandemic uh, did. Um, uh, for me, it means a more inner, interior way of being in which we pay attention to maybe things that are coming from the past, maybe chapters that need the closure and these chapters that need closure can be maybe um, relationships, intimate relationship that uh, were not closed properly and then the people, ex-boyfriends will, will pop up or um, maybe jobs or things that we did in our work that now we need to relook at uh, at them or maybe um, taking care of our house and taking care of those corners that haven't been touched in a while and bringing some some freshness and some cleanliness while also letting go of what no longer serves us so i think it's it's a period to be applied in in all areas of our life including our own inner world our values our belief system, our way of communication, um, things that maybe we didn't want to look at in the past. It's a very good summer to do this process, to, to write, to be with yourself, to feel yourself uh, inside and see what are, the, what are the doors that you need to close Remembering that every time we make a decision of closing something, immediately something is going to to open up. And maybe not immediately in, in the second, right? Because time here on Earth, it's relative. But it's just to connect us with the idea that um, an ending, a death, any kind of death, it's a big illusion because death or ending doesn't come by itself. Anything that is coming to an end, it's also bringing a new beginning. And we live in a society that we, we are very much into the new and the new beginning and the new opportunity and the next adventure, forgetting that in order to keep on receiving the new and keep on opening new doors, we also need to close the doors that uh, were there open from from our past that no longer serve us if we don't do this proce process consciously i believe that somehow life is going to do it for us and sometimes it can be more obvious or more violent and sometimes not but if we also create the habit and evolve into the consciousness of closing our chapters inner and outer in a conscious way, then there is a more significant and meaningful growth in our way of understanding life and in our way of understanding ourselves. So it is a, a good period to, to do that, especially that we are still in the eclipse season. Right now, we just passed through this solar eclipse, which was like the mega central point. Um, and we are going to have, in two weeks, uh, a lunar eclipse, but it's just going to be a penumbral. So it's not going to be full, and it's going to be the last eclipse that is going to happen in the axis of Cancer Capricorn. We are moving to, to different archetypes. Uh, the, at the end of the year from here in, in six months. So as I was saying, the moon right now is in Cancer. She's going to be there today and tomorrow still. Tomorrow evening, she's going to continue her cruising into Leo. So bringing a little bit of fire, bringing a little bit of celebration. And I think it's a, it's a beautiful continuation of the celebration of the solstice. Um, and here in Portugal, the weather really started to pick up the temperatures. Uh, it's like the, um, the summer officially entered and the days became hotter and hotter. 
we are going to have two days with uh, Moon in Leo. So whatever we can bring into creation and use the creativity of Leo, then it can be measured and used and put to service when the moon enters into Virgo. So entering the weekend, we are going to have a more stable energy. Virgo, um, it's an earth sign. It likes stability, but it's also... It has a tendency to perfectionism because it sees the very small details. And if not everything is in place, sometimes we can become a little bit um, to have too high expectations towards us and towards ourselves. And uh, we are going to end the, the weekend with Moon in Libra, which is also going to be our first quarter moon so it's going to be the midpoint in between the new moon that we had uh, yesterday and the full moon that we are going to have on 5th of july it is uh, a good sunday to stop and see what was the activity of this week how everything unfolded and how we want to envision the upcoming week that is going to lead us to to the eclipse so this is what i have for you in this uh, as far as it goes for um, the magic uh, of the moon um just just listen to yourself these these days we are living powerful times we are in full eclipse season, full retrograde season. And I believe that in this portal or very energetic periods, it's easier to listen to the signs, to receive uh, messages and to, to better look into ourselves and to understand ourselves uh, and to grow from, from there. So this, this being said... Let's um, let's go into a, a small meditation. I think it's important that uh, we connect a little bit with the energies that uh, are still going on from, from the eclipse and the solstice. And as in any meditation or in any moment that we want to ground ourselves and to center ourselves, where we start is with the feet on the ground, if you can really feel your, your feet on the ground, that's awesome. If you are sitting in lot of lotus position, then it's gaining awareness on your pelvis, on all the surfaces of your body that are touching the floor or the chair or the sofa where you are seated. Back straight, closing our eyes. And we start immediately to connect with our breath. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Allowing a little vibration, sound, sigh to come out of your throat. Making your chest vibrate and sending that vibration in all the cells of our body. And we make sure that we relax our jaw, the muscles of our face. We make sure that we relax our shoulders, dropping them direction earth, making our heart, our chest open. <sighs> Thank <sighs> you. 
and we make sure that all of our pelvic area is also relaxed. All of our genital area, all the first chakra, the first energetic point of our body that connects us with our roots are relaxed. And throughout this meditation time, we always keep our breath active. And even if our thoughts, our mind takes over, it's okay. We observe the thoughts, we let them go. And we bring our attention to the inhale and exhale. And we bring our attention in our first chakra, the pelvic area, the perineum. And from all our pelvic area, we start imagining roots going down on our feet, on our legs, and they enter the floor finding their way into the earth. And with every inhalation and every exhalation, these roots become more vivid, more alive more flexible and stronger. Going deeper and deeper into earth, into Pachamama, into this very amazing, powerful, living being. It's, it's our planet, our home. This amazing spaceship that is taking us through space around the ball of fire that we call sun together with a satellite that we call the moon and many other planets in a system that is so perfectly aligned that eclipses can happen, shadows over shadows, in a perfect synchrony. The moon had to be the size and had to be at the distance that it is in order to cast a perfect shadow on earth completely blacking out the sun and vice versa the earth also casts her shadow on the moon in a perfect symmetric balanced manner. So we use our breath, inhalation and exhalation to grow these roots into our own home knowing that we have access to this wisdom 
to this power, to this balance. And with every inhalation, we activate our roots and we absorb, we call into our bodies, into our hearts, all this wisdom, all this power. Remembering that we have this wisdom, this power, these mysteries inside of our own body too. The body of the earth, so similar with our own body. Minerals and stones, the continents of the planet Earth, the same way that we also have bones and inner structures, the rivers, the oceans, the lake, like our blood and other fluids that circulate throughout all of our body. The heat the fire right at the center of our planet coming out in volcanic substance, lava, the same way that we have our inner fire. Here deep in our belly, And of course, all the atmosphere, all the air that we breathe that enters our lungs and circulates to our brain and to all the cells of our body. In the same way that our Pachamama, our home, has her own cycles that are being marked in this amazing dance with the sun and the moon. Our body has cycles to vibrating and dancing with these bigger cycles of our earth. We inhale, absorbing from the wisdom of these cycles. And we exhale and we integrate in our body this wisdom, this power, relaxing, receiving everything that we have to receive. And let's be here for a little bit longer, paying attention to our breath and keeping this very subtle alignment of our inner cycles, inner wisdom, connecting to the outer cycles, to the outer wisdom. Allow any image, thought, sensation, 
emotion to come to you. Observe it and let it go, creating space for something else. And together, let's take three complete cycles of breath, inhaling through our nose, holding a little bit, exhaling through the mouth, inhaling, Exhaling. <sighs> Inhaling again, one last time, as deep as you can. <sighs> Exhaling everything and retaking a normal breath. And as you say your thank yous through your roots, to everything that was present in you, to everything that came. Taking your time to stretch, to move your arms, your feet, your fingers, your toes in your own rhythm. I'm already going to use this energy and pull some cards. And I'm going to use the animal deck, connecting with the energies of the nature. During this weekend, I was in a very beautiful place where nature is more alive, more pure, in contact with different animals that are so active. And as it's an eclipse and it brings out the shadow in us, I've been also in contact with a lot of animals that were dead on the sideways of the roads I've been driving or next to my house 
or even in the place that I spend my weekend, teaching us this eternal dance, the spiraling of cycles, of ending, of death, and new beginnings, rebirth. And I'm going to, to use a different type of drawing. I'm going to draw a card for the past, an indication for what is it that we need to let go of, what are the doors that need to be closed. Then another card for the present moment. What is it that we need to pay attention right now? What is the message for you right now? And another card for the future. What are these new doors that are opening for us? What do we need to pay attention to? So you can open your eyes if you don't have them already opened. Hope you stretch your body. And let's see what the cards are telling us. For the past, there were two cards that came out. You can see here, this is the, how do we call it? My English today is uh, all over the place. I've been speaking a lot of Portuguese during the, the weekend. So we have the spider. And this is a, a male deer. And I'm also forgetting the name right now. So the spider is inviting us to, to look at the connections that we have in our life, reminding that everything gets connected. And in the same time, as everything gets connected, it in, as it's part of the past reading, for me, it's just a confirmation of what are the connections, what are the things that we need to let go, making bridges connected with what is coming. And in this process of closing doors and opening new ones, this card says leadership. And for me, leadership is not a having power over other people or situation it's basically becoming our own leader leader leading the life um, that we want to live becoming the leader that we want to become and we don't need to have teams or to be in position of power to be leaders we just need to really incorporate and own everything that is ours, all of our power, all of our wisdom, all of our talents, everything that we want to bring to the world. And that's for me, it's like the most beautiful way of leading, of being a leader. The energy of the moment, of the present moment, what we really need to, to pay attention to, it's a very powerful card, is the snake, is the 11 card. And the snake, it's inviting us to alchemy, to transform. The snake has so many, so many meanings, and it's so present in so many cultures. Um, and is this animal that in a lot of the collective consciousness, it's looked as a scary animal, even if there are cultures where this fear doesn't exist. It is the animal that in the um, Catholic and Orthodox religion is seen as the mean animal that, that brought the, um, the knowledge of everything to Eve and to Adam. It is the animal that sheds its skin 
So that's why the transformation and the alchemy, it's inviting us and it's making us aware that right now we are in this process of shedding our skin. And that's that can be painful or it can be it can have its own time. You know, some it's beautiful to see in nature when the snake leaves its skin because sometimes it just needs to be in a place for enough time and have that moment in which the skin, the new skin under, it's growing from the inside out. And then the old skin is just leaving the body. And then it comes that moment when the snakes just gets out of this alchemy and leaves all the skin behind it's beautiful when, when we have the honor to find in nature the skin of the snake. Um, in the, in the most, more Eastern cultures like India, uh, we know about Kundalini. Uh, maybe you've heard of Kundalini Yoga, but Kundalini is this energy that lives right at the basis of our spine in the root chakra that I was also talking in the meditation. And it says that um, is this energy of awakening. And when we have this energy activated, it starts going up like a snake on our spine uh, towards the top of our head where we have the crown, crown chakra making like this, the connection in between the earthly part of ourselves with the energetic part of ourselves. So I think this is also the, the message here of this awakening, this inner strength, the vitality, the connection with the pure force of living that pulsate in our heartbeat and in all of our cells in our body. So very powerful um, moment and very powerful reading and being able for the triumph. This is the, the card for the future, the horse and the horse brings triumph. The horse, it's a very beautiful, strong and elegant and sensitive animal that in, in this card, in this deck is connected with the, with the triumph. So for me, this is just a reassurance that we are going to pass through this alchemy, through this transformation, and we are going to get out of it in a triumphant way, in a successful way, um, bringing the, the new chapters of our lives to, to light. Well, I hope it makes sense. I hope uh, it gives you any types of, uh, of insight. And if you want um, a personal reading, a card right now, this is the moment to, to ask for it. You can write it in the chat uh, and I can draw a card for you for, for this week, for the energy of the moment and uh, this week's message. Yay! <laughs> Let's see. What do we have for you, Maria? What's the energy that is present for you? <laughs> I'm glad you, you like the deck. It was a deck that today a friend of mine asked me to, to send her an explanation of one of the animals. And I was like, okay, maybe this is a, a sign to use this deck as it's one of the decks that connects me with the, the nature. And nature is so active now. So for Maria, uh, a, a card already jumped but I'm going to, to pick another one. So you're going to have two cards, one that wants to speak by itself 
And another one that I'm going to ask as support. For... Okay, so the card that jumped, it's interesting because every, every card has a number and the, the numbers are not picked randomly. The person, my friend that created this, this deck, placed each animal with also a specific uh, number as you as i as i told you in the one maybe you saw or you you noticed that for example the um, the snake it's 11 which is a very um powerful number every repetition of number in numerology it's seen as something that a power that is doubled so the card that jumped for you maria it's the 22nd card it's the bear, the bear, and the bear, the, the main message of the bear, it's safety. So I don't know if that makes sense for you. I hope uh, it does. And I'm, I just, I want to, to see here the phrase the phrase is that the the message of the be the bear says so this safety is about discovering the um, the origin of your real true power and remembering that you are a generous giver and receiver of the unlimited abundance of life and you feel safe this is the the message of the the bear connecting it with the supporting card that i picked which is card number 35 which is one of the small little lizards, the most common lizards, at least here in the Iberic Peninsula, we can we can see them everywhere. The ones that are on on the stones, uh, they like the the heat of the stones. Uh, and the message of this uh, these little creatures it's um, reunited. The phrases being, the invitation here being to reunite with the lost aspect of your soul. And it's an invitation to unify all parts of yourself, reclaiming the love that is yours. Beautiful, beautiful messages, knowing that you are safe to do so, you are safe to reclaim your your power. This beautiful cards that came together. Anyone else that wants a, a reading from the animals? This is the deck. It is a Portuguese deck. You can find other decks with the wisdom of, of animals in, in English. I don't have any. I just have this one in, in Portuguese. And it's made with the wisdom of the, the animals from the Iberic Peninsula. And the animals that are, that are in this deck are the majority of the animals that are already also in danger of extin extinction. So it's also a way of making us aware that we are doing some damage to our planet and some of these beautiful animals are not finding space anymore, uh, are seeing their home being destroyed so the population is reducing. 
hopefully we remember to to be a little bit more kind to our planet the same way that the planet is so kind and so generous and so patient with us you're welcome i'm i'm glad it makes sense okay so this is what i have for for today i'm going to wish you i'm wishing you many blessings for this important period lots of abundance of health of uh, money of relationships of inner and outer resources um, may everything that you dream of become reality May you have everything that you need to, to turn your dreams into reality. And enjoy all the energies. And I'm going to see you next Monday. Have a good week, everyone. Take care.